One of the great honors of my job is that I am able to sit and, and talk with people about what, what matters, important things about what people believe and what people think. And one of the things I hear often as I'm listening to what people believe and, and, and think about uh, God and faith and salvation, it is, I get this sense that for some there's this idea that salvation is, is somehow we're being saved from this world. We, we're being saved out of this world. That once we start following Jesus, we're, we're going to get out of here and it's our path out of everything that's messed up. If you listen closely, this is actually what we sing in some of our hymns, right? I'll, I'll fly away. If you listen to the, the words to that, some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away. What are you doing? You're getting out of here, right? To home on God's celestial shore, I'll fly away. I'll fly away. I'll fly away in the morning when I die. Hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. It's hard not to sing that, true. But one of my favorite hymns, but it, it, again, is this idea that you hear this idea that this world is messed up and, and following Jesus is our ticket out of here. We're getting away. We're being saved from the world. We're getting out of here. This way of thinking about following Jesus is not anything new. People have been thinking about Jesus in this way for over 2,000 years now. And there are groups of Christians who, have, who conceive of, of following Jesus as a way to solve the mistake. Because this world, it's messed up, it's a mistake, it's a problem. We, we need to be saved from the world. And as I think about that, if we need to be saved from the world, you know, the easiest way that Jesus could have saved us from the world is to torn open the sky and drop the ladder. Right, just go climb up the ladder and get out of here. That, that's, what, that, that's the good news, right? Or, or maybe they put a big old arrow across the, so, across the sky pointing to, a, to an escalator that would just take us up out of here to be saved from the world. But that's not what we read about tonight, is it? We don't read about being saved from the world. We, read, we don't read about Jesus opening up the sky and dropping a ladder so we can get out of here. We read about something different. When we read the gospel according to Luke, the good news of, of Jesus, what we, we don't read about Jesus showing up with an arrow pointing for the, to the way out. What we read about is Jesus, Jesus showing up to be with us. And that's a different thing altogether. Jesus doesn't show up because the so, world is so bad that we need a way to get out of it. Jesus shows up to be with the world and part of the world that we are, are part of. And once you start looking at the Gospels like this, once you start looking for with, you find it all over the place. What does Jesus do? He eats with people. He doesn't lead them to send them out in the desert to get away from everyone. He walks with them. He takes disciples and he goes with them on a journey. And he doesn't tell people to get away from it all. He says, stay where you are and let me walk with you, teach with you, eat with you, live with you. He who is fully God and fully human didn't come here to lead us out of the world. He, he came here to be with us in the world. Jesus is not here to save us from the world, but he is here so that we might be saved as the whole world is saved and made right. Jesus is with us so that the world may be whole. Jesus is with us so our sins might be forgiven. Jesus is with us so that we might be reconciled. Jesus is with us so that all of creation might be saved. God loves this good world and came to us in the person of Jesus Christ so that this world might be made right and us with it. That's what it means when we pray God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus has come. Jesus doesn't come to lead us away from the world and off to heaven. Jesus comes to us this night so that he might be, bring heaven with him so that we might have heaven here. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. That is what we're gathered around. That is our good news that we gather around this day. And so what we gather around as Jesus is born, as Jesus grows up, as he takes his first steps, as he takes his first, says his first words, as he learns from his mother and his father how to live, how to work in wood, as he joins his family, as he joins the community, as he has friends, we see that Jesus lives with us. And Jesus gathers disciples to be with him. And then he shows them that heaven can be with them as he shows them signs and miracles and resurrection. 
That's, the, that's what we gather to celebrate tonight. Jesus is God with us. We gather around this birth, and with every birth there is always potential and promise. Potential and promise for what is yet to come. And, and when we gather around this birth, the potential and the promise is what we declare when we say, God is not here to save us from the world. God is here to save the world and us with it. God is here not to take us away off to heaven. God comes to be with us to bring heaven to earth. Thanks be to God. Amen. There's a German theologian, pastor, who, uh, named Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who 60 years ago wrote that worldliness does not separate one from Christ, and being Christian does not separate one from the world. That as we belong completely to Christ, we simultaneously are completely in the world. What he is trying to express is something of the mystery that we're gathered around tonight. The idea that when God comes to be God with us, that, that God is fully in the world, but still fully God. And we're not quite sure how that works. It's a mystery, and yet in it is salvation. And so, this is the type of thing we experience as we come to this this table tonight, because as we come to this table and we partake of this, this meal, this, this communion, what we believe about this is that when Jesus says, this is my body and this is my blood, that he means that. This, this is and this is. And so it is a foretaste of the time when we will eat with our Heavenly Father, with all of those who have gone before us. It's a foretaste of the time when heaven will have come fully on earth, and the world will be made right, and sin and death will be no more. And it's also a loaf of bread I bought at Richardson's and baked yesterday. <laughs> it, it is the utterly divine and the completely common. It, it, it's, it's the blood of Jesus Christ and, and a bottle of Welch's. It's a mystery. And it is what Jesus gives his disciples so that they will have something to hold on to after he leaves. Because they have followed him, and in following him, they have had that with us. God with us. They have followed him, and they have followed Jesus, and he has shown them that God is with them, and fully God, and fully human. And, and the night on which he was betrayed, he, he's going to leave them, but he leaves them this gift. So that they might have something to hold on to. So that they might be able to experience that with God with us still. And so that is why Jesus took bread. I'm sure he didn't sanitize his hands, but I will. <laughs> Jesus took bread. And he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, Take and eat. This is my body. It is broken for you. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup and he blessed it. And he gave it to his disciples. And he said to them, Take and drink all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, the new relationship between you and God. It is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you eat this meal in remembrance of me. To light a, to light a candle on this night, it feels right. It feels proper. It feels fitting. And it, it's good to take a minute to try to figure out why. It, it's the evening on which it makes sense to light a candle for. It's one of the the darkest evenings of the year. I mean, it's not much after five, and it's already dark and cold, kind of bitter, a little bit icy, and I'm sure some people's joints are a little bit complaining about this weather if they've got some mileage on them. And so in the midst of this, this weather, this, this time of year, when we'd give about anything to see a little bit of green as we drive, by, drive down six, it is a good thing to gather around a little pinprick of light. A little, piece, a little bit of light, a little bit of flame, it dances and it puts off a little bit of heat and it gives us some hope. Spring will come again. Joy will come again. 
it, it's, it's fitting then that we do this because in the same way we gather around celebrating the birth of this child. And we celebrate the birth of this child in the midst of a time when we could focus on all that's messed up in the world. We could focus on all of the sin, all of the brokenness, all of the war, all of the politics. God help us politics. And, uh, and we could focus on all of that. But instead we gather around this small little child that is born. And when we gather around this child, we are professing our faith that as this child grows and grows in us, that the light comes into the world and the darkness will not overcome it. That as we follow Christ, we will find hope. That as he grows up, he paves a path that we can follow that leads towards the healing of the world and the bringing of the kingdom of God. And so this evening we give thanks for that. Please join me as we now then sing Silent Night. This moment is one of my favorite of the year. I thank you for joining us for it. We always wrap up worship here by sharing any opportunities. Uh, there is an opportunity here tonight. Um, for those of you who are members of the church, we continue our tradition of doing a march to the manger, which is if you want to give one final offering to the ministry of Jesus this year, you are welcome to do so in the manger in front of the tree. For those of you who have no clue what I'm talking about, who are visiting, your presence is your gift to us, and we thank you for it. For those of you who are traveling or visiting from other churches, this, thank you. It's always a, jo a joy to gather with people of other traditions and be able to worship together. And for those of you who are visiting and don't have a church, you are always welcome at this table. And I'd be honored to serve as your pastor. As we go forth, I invite you to keep this light lit until you get to the door. And I would ask you two favors. Everyone go out that door because I want to greet each and every one of you. And second, that's really good bread. Let's, <laughs> let's make sure none of it goes to waste. <laughs> Receive now this benediction. On this most holy of nights, may your heart be filled with the joy of Christ. And may that joy just echo with the laughter of that newborn child. Go now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.